hills to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Abinu Malkainu, our Father, our King, we thank you once again to stand behind your sacred desk. Lord, we ask that you increase as I decrease. All the glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. Thank you in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Today's message is the blessings of God's grace and mercy. And we're going to add for obedience. And the scripture passage is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26. Mm. Now, the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, it's called Vayikra. The book of Levit Leviticus is called Vayikra in Hebrew. And Vayikra refers to the first words of the passage, Adonai, the Lord called. So today in chapter 26, we're going to be speaking about the rewards for obedience and the punishments for disobedience. Yes. Baruch Hashem Adonai, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you will, would you please turn in your Bibles to the book of Leviticus, chapter 26. And we're going to go through this chapter. I highly suggest that anyone who has not taken the time to read the book of Leviticus, especially chapter 26, please do so. And it does not matter which uh, version of the Bible you read, God's word is all the same. Amen. 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 So this is the last Sunday for the monthly theme of the blessings of God's grace and mercy. Now, we began the year with the themes of what is God's grace and mercy. You remember that? Yeah. The love behind God's grace and mercy, a lifestyle reflecting God's grace and mercy and God's grace and mercy at Passover. And so today we're speaking about God's grace and mercy and the blessings for obedience. Mm. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 13. I'll be coming from the English Standard Version Bible, but as I said, God's Word is all the same. Amen? Amen. 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 So, chapter 26 begins with verse 1. You shall not make idols for yourselves or erect an image or pilgrim. And you shall not set up a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them, then I will give you your rains in their season. And the land shall yield its increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last to the time of the grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last to the time for sowing. And you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land securely. I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will remove harmful beasts from the land, and the sword shall not go through your land. Mm. You shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply you and will confirm my covenant with you. You shall eat old store long kept and you shall clear out the old to make way for the new. I will make my dwelling among you and my soul shall not abhor you 
and I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves, and I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk in breath. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Now let's talk about it. Are we ready to talk about it? Yes. Yeah, let's talk about Leviticus it. Leviticus chapter 26 is a remarkable, remarkable chapter promising blessings to an obedient Israel and curses to a disobedient Israel. Mm -hmm. Speak now, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, take out Israel's name. <laughs> Take out Israel's name. You know, I can put in uh, an obedient Jackie uh -huh. and a disobedient Jackie. Yeah. We can put in uh, obedient U.S. of A and a disobedient U.S. of A. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Over and over again, God reminded Israel that he gave them his foundational law and commandments. And he impressed upon them that he, Yahweh, the Lord, covenant God of Israel alone, must be worshipped. In verses 1 to 5, the carved images spoken of represented idol gods, G-O-D, small gods. The sacred pillar was associated with the pagan worship of fertility gods. Now, God wanted Israel to know that the pagan gods of the other nations were worthless, insufficient, <laughs> inadequate, mm -hmm. irrelevant, mm -hmm. and powerless. Remember how God told them, I am the Lord your God. He taught them that carving or fashioning images into shapes of animals, objects, or people and thereby worshiping them was unacceptable in his sight. Okay, no matter what they were made of, stone, clay, wood, metal, they were unacceptable. Acceptable. You see, God would bless an obedient Israel mm -hmm. with plentiful harvest, abundant rain, peace and victory in battle, as well as the season of sowing and reaping would be continual. You see, yes, God was determined to reveal himself to the world through his beloved Israel. Can you put your name in there? God is determined, determined. to reveal himself through his beloved Jack, yes. through mm -hmm. his beloved uh, gratefully blessed ministry, church, and mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And the world would see the blessings or curses upon Israel and know that they were from God. Praise God. Of Israel alone. God wanted Israel to know and the other nations to see that he was their source of survival. Now in verses 6 through 13, as you go with me, it tells us of the peace promised to Israel and how nothing or no one should cause them to fear, whether it's beasts, people, or sword. Israel would chase their enemies and their enemies would fall before them. Now, verse 8, if you go there, speaks of divine blessings with a supernatural element. Because watch this. The ratio of 5 to 100 is the result of the number 20 being the pathway, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the ratio of 100 to 10,000 mm -hmm. is the result of 100 being the pathway. So what I'm saying is that God used small or even large numbers of people to defeat Israel's enemies. He was telling them and us today that no matter what things look like or whatever the odds may seem to be, that he is still in control. Amen. 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 Debt ceiling. He is still in control. That's right. Israel should have known that God was the one to make them fruitful, multiply them, and confirm his covenant. Israel should have remembered that God would clear out the old and make way for the new. 
God spoke to the Israelites about freedom, dignity, and proclaimed their liberty as his people. And, and God invited them to walk in Amen. only Amen. Yahweh. Praise you know, God. What, what a God, you know. He, he explains it all, and then he invites you yes. to mm -hmm. walk with him. <laughs> I want to read verse 13. Because it says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves, and I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. Man. That's nothing too hard for God. That's right. Nothing. Now, I got to switch the light. Now is the time to talk about a disobedient Israel. Mm -hmm. And remember I said I put a disobedient check, a disobedient U.S. of A. Mm -hmm. For you see, I could not preach God's word about blessings and not preach about curses. Mm -hmm. I could not give a complete picture of obedience without also giving a picture of disobedience. Mm -hmm. You see, that would be unacceptable to my heavenly father. It would be like studying the New Testament without beginning to study the Old Testament first. Come on now. Yeah. This would be compared to only experiencing the sunshine in our lives and not the rain. Mm. Or knowing the blessings of obedience without the curses wow. of disobedience. Mm. For you see, once you know the total picture, then one can make the choice Come to choose now. eternity with God That's it. or hell apart from God. Mm, mm, mm. I, I know everyone here has chosen eternity mm. with God That's today. Right. Amen. So I would like to exegete these verses. In other words, I want to pull out the points of scripture given to me by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now you notice I said exegete. Isogeet is when you put stuff in. Exogeet is when you pull it out. Pull it out. Are you with me today? Pull it out. Is it all right to pull out? Pull it out. Okay, we're talking about verses 14 through 39. And I'm not going to read them, but I'm going to exegeet. Israel would have to experience both God's blessings and curses to understand the depth and breadth of being faithful to God. You know how that is sometimes? Mm -hmm. You gotta go to the, through the rough and oh. tough until you understand yeah, what God was trying to tell you to do in the first place. Oh, man. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you will notice, did you notice that the curses are double the blessings? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Someone yeah. say, ouch! Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> the, the curses are double the blessings. blessings. So beginning from verses 14 to 39, God says to them, but if you will not listen to me, if you will not do all these commandments, if you spurn my statutes and your soul abhors my rules, then I will do this to you. I will set my face against you. And if in spite of this, you will not listen to me, mm -hmm. Then if you walk contrary to me and will not listen to me mm -hmm. over and over and over again, mm -hmm. my God, let us go deeper into the future curses for a disobedient Israel. So we begin with verses 14 to 39 again. A disobedient Israel would be visited with panic, disease, fever consuming the eyes, and making the heartache, enemies eating all the seeds sold in vain, God's face set against them, being struck down by and before their enemies who would rule over them, and Israel would flee when none were pursuing them. Mm -hmm. My God. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, I mean, just think about it for a minute. If you're fleeing and nobody's chasing you, nobody's pursuing you. Oh, 
God, that's heavy. That is. That that's is. heavy. Israel would also be disciplined sevenfold. Sevenfold for their sins. Mm -hmm. Not one, not two, not yeah. three, not four, not five, not six. Sevenfold for their sins. Their pride would be broken. They would have no strength, no yield of land, and wild beasts would devour their children, livestock, and trade. Mm -hmm. All because of disobedience. Oh. Now, verses 21, if you want to go there with me, 21 to 26, reminded Israel of multiple plagues, sorrows, pestilence, mm. famine, death, desolation, and exile to come as well. For multiple wickedness would lead to multiple punishments. Mm, mm, mm. And through it all, through it all, our God of mercy and grace, he never said that he would forsake Israel, wow. but only that they would experience curses for their disobedience. You see, God still loves them. Mm -hmm. He still loves us. Amen. God still loves his sons and daughters today. He never forsakes us. Never. Can we go a little deeper into the curse of famine or Israel? Let's go. Beloved, this curse would bring about cannibalism, the eating of their own sons and daughters' oh, flesh, because God. there was no food and depravity set mm. in. You know, <laughs> depravity gets into your mind. That's why people are losing their minds. Come on now. My God, how could this happen? <laughs> well, the fertile land would become unproductive and cause starvation. Mm, mm, mm. And other curses such as living in safety mm. would become foreign. Mm. Those savage beasts that were once removed, they would now return and devour the sword that Israel used for victory mm. over their enemies. Oh my goodness. It would now be used against themselves. And for Israel, God's, disfav God's favor would become his disfavor. Oh my God. Oh my God. I never want to live a life where God's favor for me becomes his disfavor Ooh, in me. My goodness. Curses. Curse. You know, even in exile, Israel would be cursed with fear, faintness, and wasting away. For their disobedience concerning the Sabbath year. God would empty them from the land mm. so that the land would rest and enjoy its Sabbath. Wow. Disobedient Israel. See, God says, Sabbaths, Saturdays, spend time with me. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much time you spend, with, but spend time with me. Yes. That's what we're returning to. Yes. Spending time with God mm -hmm. on Sabbath. But look at the amazing grace and mercy of God in verses 40 to 42. Can you go there to 40 to 42? Thank God for big print Bibles. They are amazing. In 40 to 42, we read about God's promise of restoration with a repentant Israel. Confession, repentance, humbled hearts, and amends were what Israel needed to do, and to stop sinning, of course. So in verses 42 to 46, God reminded them that he would remember his covenant with Jacob, Isaac, Abraham, and the land of Israel. The unbreakable nature of his covenant with Israel would remain steady and ready to restore them when they repented and turned back to the Lord, their God. Here, what do we see? We see apostasy, you know, turning away from God. And then we see them being exiled. But then we see God's restoration at work. Mm. You know, Second Chronicles says it all for us, 7 and 14, and we all know this one. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal 
their land. Amen. Amen. You know, as for me, I desire to receive God's blessings for my life. I ask God to keep me in the path of obedience daily. You know, for God has redeemed me, restored me, renewed me, and blessed me. Blessed me to be here 70 years. Thank you, God. Amen. 70 years. And I don't take it for granted. Amen. I understand and receive the blessing of God's grace and mercy in my life. And I recognize, oh boy, do I recognize, that through it all, I am blessed beyond measure. Oh, and I am blessed beyond belief. For we are gratefully blessed. Yeah. We are blessed as his people and have been chosen for his purpose. Mm -hmm. God's progressive revelation is being shown to us individually and corporately. Yes. And when he knows we are ready to receive it, he'll reveal it to us. Right. And guess what he expects us Come to do? Right Walk in it. Yes. Amen. Talk in it. Yes. yes. Live in it. Yes. yes. Don't do a double dutch. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You walk straight. Yes. Keep your path straight. Yes. He is the Lord, our God. God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now someone might say, but this is 2023. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. And my response would be, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. It's 2023. And the same things are happening today. There is obedience and disobedience all around the globe. There are blessings and curses. And God, Yahweh, he will not be mocked. Mm -mm. This may be a different year, but the same foolishness and disregard for the Lord is still happening. This is why we as believers and disciples of Christ, we must stand our ground in his word. Right. We must be a witness of his glory to others as we continually spiritually hold up the bloodstained banner of Come the Lord. You know, you know, there's a song yes. that, um, oh, oh, they still do it today in, in a lot of churches, but uh, when I was going to the church, uh, Baptist church, uh, over mm, seven, uh, over uh, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. all right, I had to get that mass straight. <laughs> There's a song that the district ushers, they would be, it was usher day. We are and they would, be, they would be in the line ready yes. to go. And when the song uh, 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 went and started singing, I won't sing it because I know uh, copyright infringement. All right, but anyway, <laughs> the song would be, we are soldiers <laughs> in the army. We got to fight, although we have to cry. Then they say, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Every single usher day. And every time you walked into the church, they were holding up the bloodstained banner. You see, every time we walk into Gratefully Blessed Ministries, we're holding up the bloodstained banner. Every time we, we pray for someone, every time we give someone our time, our talent, our love, we are holding up the bloodstained banner. Mm -hmm. So in conclusion to this walk down the Leviticus chapter 26 road today, let us ask in prayer for God's strength to pursue righteousness. Mm -hmm. Let us apply chapter 26 to our lives mm -hmm. and take personal inventory mm -hmm. of what God has called us to do and then do it. Amen. Be Amen. like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Yes. The, the choice to be obedient or disobedient is, is totally ours. It is. The result of obedience and disobedience will result in blessings or curses. Amen. Remember that the Lord is our God. Amen. Church, be blessed and sanctified each day in the Lord. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Now.